Hey guys, this is Tony and today I wanted to discuss the most recent blog, the one about the addressing community concerns and stuff like that. Talk about uh, what basically Scopely is promised in it and things that I think also need addressing in it. So, the purpose is basically to hold uh, Scopely accountable to what they said in the blog. If they said something's coming, then hold them accountable to that. If they said, oh, we're going to be making sure we keep track of this in the future, hold them accountable to that and give you guys like a TLDR of basically what they said. Also give additional feedback to Scopely on other things that do need covering that weren't covered. Now keep in mind that I'm not spending until we see actual real change still. It's not like I've just throw it in the hat because they've kind of given us a little bit of lip service. I'm actually waiting until some of this stuff is implemented, making sure that things like the raid milestones are implemented properly and address multiple different concerns. I want to make sure that people are happy. I want to make sure I'm happy. Just basically kind of making sure that everyone is happy, including Scopely. First of all, a couple things. I want to make sure you guys review your review. Basically, uh, as you guys know, in the App Store, you have the opportunity of being able to review the game. I most recently changed mine to a two-star review just because of the massive amount of bugs and stuff like that. Once they fix things, then I will review it and I might shake it up to like a four-star, might even be a five-star, depending on how much they address. But at the moment, I am doing it based on what is actually in the game, not based on things that they have promised and just kind of making sure that I have reviewed and change my review so make sure you guys do that make sure you look at your review and make sure that it's still accurate to your feelings in the game at the moment as i said in mine i still really enjoy this game but there are some very overwhelming um, issues in it currently Next, I want to address a few things. First of all, some jackasses are spreading that I hate the game or want people to quit. I don't. I actually really enjoy Marvel Strike Force, and that's why I'm so passionate about wanting people, like wanting the game to improve and for Scopely to listen, not just to myself, not just to the other content creators, not just to the whales, not just to the top alliances, but to everyone and make sure they're addressing things. If I hated this game, I just effing quit. Like, I've done that previously. I just quit. If I hated it, I would do that again. But I don't. I do believe that Scopely, or at least the community managers, are listening to us. And don't grief Cerebro or Zeeks. I can't say this enough. They are trying to help us be able to communicate with the devs and trying to pull their weight there to try and help us get what we need to get. Being dicks to them just screws over the lines of communication. Why would they want to communicate with us if every time they try and communicate us with us, we're just swearing like sailors? Like, there's no reason for that to happen. There's also some people under the impression that I only ask about issues that affect myself. I want to make sure you guys know that everything I covered in this, I have talked to Scopely about. I want to make sure that you guys know that I am listening. I spent probably an hour last time I was streaming listening to people's concerns from every variety of player. So that way I could take them to Scopely and say, look, this is what's going on. I, I'm... I want to make sure that I'm here for the community and I'm not just like looking out for myself. If I was looking out for myself, I'd just be suggesting Gambit and Rogue over and over again and just ignoring any other things because that's what I want. Like, no, that's not true. I do care about other stuff more than that, but you guys get what I mean. So things that they mentioned slash promised, promised, I can't say pepper. Anyway, um, so First of all, the orange gear bottleneck. They're going to be updating the raid milestones to include more gear, especially orange gear, because they actually were like, oh, hey, this is actually a bottleneck. What? Who would have expected that? No, they, they realized that they were being a bit too strict on it. Increasing the quantity available from the supply store and the raid store and a new feature that's going to be happening. So that is what they are doing. This is 100% things that I are doing. It's going to be happening. There was a lot more than just kind of brushing us off in this blog they did actually put in some things in here that are going to be implemented so that's kind of a running theme of this is holding them accountable to what they did say so training modules are going to be one in one of the mode specific stores and they're actively investigating additional options so this part here is an easy thing for us to keep track of because as soon as we see them being added to 
whichever store they end up adding them to, then we can kind of tick it off the box. The other one's a bit more difficult. We kind of have to be looking out for when they add them somewhere else. Hopefully it's not someone like the RTA that people don't want to actually play. You can actually get additional training modules from there. So keep that in mind if you are struggling and you don't mind sitting and autoing RTA in the background, but just overall kind of, it's something that we have to kind of keep track of character availability. This one is a little bit harder for us to keep track of. Um, they, the, I should have put here, this is the war store that they're looking to remove characters from when more, uh, less desirable characters from there when new ones enter. That's meant to be from the war store. I forgot to put that note there. However, this one here, being more mindful to not allow this to happen in the mo in the future, that's something that like, I personally am going to be trying to keep track of because I do the character availability, have a look at where characters are farmable and when they get added in there and mix it up and stuff. They have been keeping to their char two characters farmable per month, sometimes more. And I know that there's people who are out there who are like, but they're adding four characters per month. They're actually not on average about 2.5 to 2.8 characters per month uh, over like the, the last kind of 12 months, I believe it was. It's roughly around there. Um, so it's, they've been adding roughly enough to be farmable. So it's just something we kind of have to keep track of and making sure characters like Beast don't get skipped. That usually happens when they add in a new character for a legendary. And then those characters that are requirements for the legendary, such as Pimtech, get made farmable beforehand, which means these characters get pushed back. One thing I would what I want to know kind of thing is if Beast counts as being fountainable given the fact that he's from the RTA. I hope not. And I hope that they kind of look at adding him somewhere else as well. Doom rewards. It's not a full release yet. So that's kind of, it's difficult to judge it based on it, but the next tier of ISO is going to be in there. So that's something we've got to keep track of as well. RTA, they're just a minor update next patch to allow you to keep your progress if you quit. So if you come up against someone that's just going to wreck your face, then you can just quit out it towards the end of it. Raid season milestones, new milestones are coming. Now, this is an important one. I know a lot of people are looking at their blog and they're like, oh, they talked about orange gear, but they didn't talk about purple gear. They actually did talk about purple gear here. They said rewarding additional gear to help players progress at all levels. So that's potentially blue gear, purple gear, and orange gear. So it is something that is going to be in there. I suspect they most likely put the gear credits in there and then some orange orbs later on or something. Or maybe there's like a new orange orb added to the, uh, added to like the blitz store for like the gear credits or something. Who knows? But it does say reward additional gear for all levels. So purple gear is included in this as far as I am reading there. Next up, save squads. This one's easy to track because it's just, they're going to be adding more next game versions. So next time, I'm not sure if it's going to be with the minor update that's coming up for adding the Shadowland characters in, or if it's going to be like the next big one. So the characters that we haven't actually had announced yet, I'm not sure on those two. We'll have to kind of see next week, I guess. And additional information regarding further save squads enhancements in 2021 preview. So that's something to easy keep track of because they'll announce it in the 2021 preview. So in summary, in three weeks, we're going to be getting more details. So that's another thing to keep track of is just making sure that we do get that blog in three weeks and they do kind of have more details about these and more timing stuff because we don't know when this timing stuff is happening. Is these raid milestones going to be happening in two months? Are they going to be happening in four months? Is it something that's way down the track or something? That's something that we just kind of have to keep track of. And in this blog in three weeks, they're going to go through it. So things that weren't mentioned. These are things that I believe do need to be addressed very soon. And they are issues that are facing a lot of the community. Some of them might not be facing you at the moment, but they are things that are facing a lot of people. So the first one here, gold bottle, uh, wait, I think I skipped one there by accident. No, nope. gold bottle mech. So if more orange gear is added to the supply store, then you are going to need more gold. So that's something that does need to be addressed. The gold bottleneck overall is rather large. Yes, we do get a fair bit of gold each day, but if they are requiring additional stuff for us to be able to get the additional gold gear, then it is something that's going to be need to address there. Next up, the time consumption of the game. Given Blitz Sim was meant to reduce that, but then they added RTA immediately, which means that it was basically around the same. It was about a neck. And I mean, I think RTA actually takes longer than Blitz sometimes, but um, overall the time consumption of the game wasn't really 
decreased at all. And RTA is still that kind of low effort gameplay where you're just going in and pressing auto. Next up, arena slingshotting slash hard locking, hard locking slow close locking, whatever you want to call it. Basically where there's a bug where you can actually lock someone in. And then at the end, after you've dropped a million places, attack them. And if you win, then all of a sudden you switch spaces and that person's way out whoop whoop and you're now in their place. It's a bug slash exploit that has been going on for quite a while and it's something that needs to be addressed slingshotting as well is a ridiculous feature that they just it seemed to have been a bug that was added in and now it's just it's persisting in there no one really knows i mean we do know how it works but it's kind of it's hard to keep track of because did you win did you win did you win it's just kind of random next blitz for new players slash mid game players who are competing against veterans putting people like like my wife, for example, who was about like 2 million TCP, I think, or something, competing against someone like me, who's like 10 million TCP, she's getting very discouraged because there's no way that she can get enough shards for Bishop to potentially um, get him up a star or anything like that. It kind of discourages you wanting to buy characters because you're not going to be able to get into their blitz very hard to be able to actually get them up or anything. It's overall just a really bad system to compete against people who have been playing for a thousand days as a car as a person who's just hit like level 60 and unlocked the blitz sim you switch over to the um, big to the big boys basically red star promo credits bottleneck to work around the system so you added the red star promo credits but then they're still really really strangled there's no kind of way to get them in a consistent basis that actually matters in a in a quantity that actually matters you could add them to the red star blitz or add them in like in increase the rewards from the chaos theory event or whatever you kind of want to do there but either way they are very strangled and it's very hard to be able to get up enough to even promote a character from four to five red stars the blogs regarding the legendary events They've been changed twice or three times now in a row and people are just losing faith in them that they're going to have the right information. We don't know entirely what's happened here, like why Fury was moved, why Star-Lord was moved, why Black Bolt and Ebony Moore were like brought up to take those spots. We don't entirely know what's going on here, but it's... I'm not trying to blame anyone here, but it's just a really big frustration when you're kind of planning around one thing and it gets changed up. I'm not saying add a legendary schedule. Yes, it would be a good idea to have that, and I would really like that, but I do understand why Scopely has this kind of mentality of throw a pin at a wall and see which one sticks. But I really wish that, that at least if they announce something, they stick with it. Yes, I understand that, oh, it might have been the wrong thing to announce, but... Is it really going to, it hurts your player base more to just kind of switch it up on the fly. Next up, the ability orbs. Ability orbs have been in the game since the very start. Um, they got a minor update, I believe, when orange materials were added. And that is it. They are awful veteran players. I, I think most veteran players just hold them because there's no point in opening them. I mean, best case scenario, you get like five orange materials, if that. They're so rare that you just barely ever get them. I mean, I've watched uh, mobile gamers offer review enough to see that they are trash. And they just need to be updated and brought up to the modern economy, especially when you are requiring so many orange materials for these new teams. And that's it. There's a few things that, as I said, that I want to see addressed as soon as possible. And there are some promises that they did make that I will be holding them to as hard as I can. There's just overall a lot of things that I really hope they actually address next coming up. Uh, and Cerebro and Zeeks, if you're watching this, I really value the fact that you guys are actually pushing for us to have these uh to have some kind of impact and it's really appreciative and I hope that people are treating you guys okay. But that's it for today. Have a great day and goodbye.